I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. This is the Armor Light Super Sass 308. It's capable of firing one half inch groups and it has a maximum range of a thousand meters, which translates uh, into 1,093 yards. It probably outperforms me unless I would practice a lot, uh, but most shooters um, can't do the accuracy this gun is capable of doing unless they practice also a lot. Back in 2004, they wanted to change um, the sniper rifles quite a bit and they turned them in to semi-automatic um, firearms. The bolt action rifles are very accurate, but they're not fast on acquisition and they can't engage multiple targets as fast as a semi-automatic rifle can. This particular rifle was uh, manufactured in October of 2006. And there's so many things uh, about this firearm that make it very unique. And uh, one of the best sniper rifles out there today. You know, back in 2004, um, you know, the US military didn't adopt this firearm as one of their own. But Armor Light went on to sell the firearm to other countries, um, other militaries around the world. And actually, uh, they sold it to the Brazilian police to protect their Olympics uh, one year. And a lot of times when the US picks a firearm for their military, it doesn't mean the firearm actually failed. There's other things they take into consideration, like, for instance, the plant size. And at the time, Armor Light wasn't a big manufacturing plant. And also they consider also the number of employees and also how fast they can produce rifles. So this rifle met all the qualifications. It didn't fail on anything. In fact, it was as accurate and fail-proof as the other rifles in the competition for the contract. So this rifle today probably sells for around $3,000 without the scope. And the scope I have on it is at the time this video is being made is uh, the price is $2,250. And that's about right. You want the scope uh, to be up there uh, uh, with the rifle. and. Uh, because when you got an accurate rifle like this, you don't want to skimp on, on the scope. And this is a Valdata scope, uh, 4.5 by 28, and it has a 50 millimeter objective. So in low light conditions, it, it gives you that benefit. Um, so it is a very accurate scope. It's close to being zeroed right now at 100. Uh, we're gonna shoot today at 100 yards again to make sure it's zeroed there. And then when we do another video, we'll go down to the 300 yard range and that's the max I can shoot here at this range. But it does have a maximum range of 1,000 meters, okay? Another thing that this rifle is known for is it's free floating barrel. And it's a 20 inch barrel, one and 10 inch twist. So it makes it one of the most accurate barrels out there. And this is a heavy gun. It weighs a little over 12 pounds without the scope. So um, there's only one modification that I did to this firearm, and that is I replaced the trigger with a Geisley Super Tricon two-stage trigger. And it's very crisp. The second stage is just so crisp, it's unbelievable. The bolt carrier group is probably one of the best in the industry. And um, you notice this gun also does not have a forward assist on it and it doesn't need one with this heavy bolt carrier group. So another thing that Armor Light did that the other manufacturers did not do um, to these guns was they put in a um, fail-proof system for uh, slam fires. So this is slam fire proof because it the firing pin actually has a heavy duty spring on it. So um, the bolt carrier group in the test 
and the competition never failed. Um, it, it was flawless all the way through. And also it has a gas valve in front to where you can switch it to suppressed and non-suppressed fire. Okay, now it uses the M14 steel construction mags here. And um, these are a lot stronger than the, uh, the aluminum ones. So that, that's a good thing to have too. Um, so I was lucky to find this gun without the forward assist. Um, most of them do have the forward assist on there, but um, Mark Westrom that designed the gun, he didn't want that forward assist on there. So, but he had to satisfy a lot of people that really wanted it on there. So he actually put on um, a forward assist that wasn't really capable of handling um, that bigger bolt carrier group. Um, it was basically for an AR-15 and not an AR-10, but it looked like it could do the part, but um, it pretty much it was just on there for decoration. Now, another thing that Mark Westrom did to the bolt carrier group is he put in a really heavy duty bolt catch, and that was a lot better than the actual gun that got chosen. And, and also that spring on the firing pin set it ahead of the other gun too that got chosen. Um, now, this charging handle is unique because it's designed to where it doesn't have any gases that come back into the shooter's face. It directs it away from the shooter. So that's another advantage of, of this firearm. But all in all, this gun, um, was sold to other militaries around the world, uh, to other law enforcement agencies around the world, and then it had a commercial purpose too. It got out to civilians too. So they did make money on the gun and uh, it was successful in that way. Um, the only thing is it just didn't make the U.S. military contract, which, which doesn't make it a bad gun. It just, it just makes it an overlooked gun, and um, it's something that if you can find out there on some website, um, you might want to get one of these guns. And uh, Now, they, they make a Gen 2. This is a Gen 1 Super SAS, of course, but I don't think they called it a Gen 1. I, I just think they just called it the Super SAS. And then the next one that they modernized, it was called the Gen 2. So a lot of people like the, the Super SAS over the Gen 2 just because of the looks and the style of the Super SAS. Now one thing when you have an SHTF rifle is you want to stock up on, on the ammunition. And I wanted this, um, the ammunition to be from the same lot. So I bought $1,000 worth of this ammunition and this is the Creedmoor um, match grade 167 uh, grain and um, it's a 308 Winchester. Okay, so this is very accurate and it will be very accurate with all the, with all the ammunition that I bought from the same lot. Okay, so that's very important when you choose your ammo. So, um, what we're going to do today, I brought a lot of equipment with me, of course, and we are going to set up the GoPro so we have instant feedback, and I will put that on the bottom corner over here for you, and we're at the 100-yard range today, and we're going to zero the scope in, and then in another video, uh, when we have time, we'll come back and we'll, we'll shoot at uh, 300 yards. That's the farthest I can shoot here at this gun range, so let's get started. Armor Light recommends shooting this match grade 308, uh, 167 grain. Um, so that's what we're going to shoot today. We're going to shoot five here to start with. All right. Make sure we're in the safe mode. The winds have picked up here now. I would say they're probably close to 11 miles an hour. Okay, so we're gonna start with the upper target here. And 
All right, so I'm going to place the crosshairs right in the center of the bullseye. Okay, safety is off. Right at the bottom of the bullseye there. Okay, so I'm going to shoot a group of three before I make any adjustment. See that first two there, right next to each other. I'm going to put the crosshairs right where I shot the last one, right in the middle of the bullseye. Looks like it went through the same hole. Turn the safety on. Let's fire another one there. We'll fire five. Safety's off. fire just a, just a tad lower so let's go ahead and raise it up didn't raise it up at me did it It shot lower. Okay, when that happens, just make sure that was the last one. So, <clears throat> okay, let's turn it back on to safe. All right. I know this has a bipod on it, but I really like to, before I use the bipod, I really want to get it to where it's grouping right there in the bullseye. Safety's off. Here we go. little bit higher trigger is really smooth here we go Okay, I brought it down one click. But look at that grouping this barrel is capable of doing. This is a perfect SHTF rifle. There we go. leave it there because uh, 
I don't even need the spotting scope with this scope. And it's on power 28, so that's where you want to zero it in and it's as high as power. Let's try another one here. Here we go. You see what this barrel's capable of doing? That's why for an SHTF rifle you want a free floating barrel. And you know the public seems to follow uh, the trend of the US military and what they adopt as their firearm of choice. And, you know, you don't want to be one of those people that do that because, as you can see with this firearm, how accurate it is. And it's, it's just an amazing sniper rifle. I mean, look at that. I don't want to make any more adjustments to it. All right. So let's shoot this one. I'll put the safety back on until I'm, I get adjusted here. Now I always like to check this this foot, this rubber foot back here. Make sure I can I've had it on the edge of the table. That way I can get my shoulder into it better. Okay. And also I can move up to see through that scope since I have it on 28 power here. Okay, taking the safety off. Here we go. Okay, well, we've got those corner squares. So let's uh, load another five. Okay, turn my safety on. All right, let's go to the upper right corner on that bottom target. Safety's off. right dead center in that bullseye. I would say with the previous shells I just fired, I would say this rifle is zeroed in, but since we got four more, let's just, what we'll do, let's just do this, since that's dead in the center, let's go down to the bottom right corner of that bottom target bottom right corner and let's put one in there All right the safety is off here we go okay bullseye in there okay so let's slide over to the bottom left corner. You see why I did that? Because what you'd be doing is be going through the same. Same bullseye all the time. Okay, safety is off. Here we go. Okay, the 
so now we're going to go to we're going to go to the upper left hand corner of that bottom target now for that bullseye Okay, safety is off. Here we go. Okay. That was just touching on that, but that's really a tiny, tiny bullseye, but we hit the bullseye with that. So you see what this this rifle is capable of doing here. Okay, so we can see what this uh, remarkable Super SAS is able to accomplish. And this is the first target we fired at. And I was going back and forth here to get these and there was one that went through the same hole this is the tight grouping that you get like I said it's a half inch it's capable of half inch groupings and even at you know up to a thousand meters but then I came down to this one and I started shooting in the center and there was no reason to keep firing in there because they just keep going through the same hole so I came down here I think uh, this one first and I came down to here and hit all of them this one's actually touching the bullseye but these three are all in the bullseye, and this is right on the edge of the bullseye, so it was successful at um, zeroing this rifle in at 100 yards today. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you watching, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, because we're going to be going down to the 300-yard range next, and uh, but that's as far as we can shoot here.